Good evening, everyone, and welcome to a sold-out Bluffton Gymnasium on the campus of Bluffton High School as the Bluffton Pirates welcome in the Columbus Grove Bulldogs. Hello, everyone. I'm Danny Holbrook alongside Darren Gilbert and our entire WSN crew. And Gilly, it's tournament time in the state of Ohio, and this is going to be an absolute madhouse. This place is sold out. These two teams played a couple weeks ago. I'm ready to go. Yeah, you know what? <laughs> it's the third season. And that's tournament time, and it's the old motto of one and done. You can't afford a slip up. And like you said, they played, what, three weeks ago? Yeah, they did. And they played at Columbus Grove. And, you know, Bluffton, quite honestly, just didn't look very good that night. And Grove just kept getting better. And I think a lot of that has to do with Mr. Burnesser is finally getting healthy. But I'm like you, it's going to be a – an absolute war tonight. They know one another exceptionally well. Can you imagine just alone what that scouting report looks like? Because you got very good coaches on both sides that understand the game and know how to break film down. And yeah, it's going to be a great, great opening round game in Division Three. Our premier sponsor tonight is Northwest Ohio Recycling in Pandora, paying top dollar for aluminum, copper, brass, scrap iron, and scrap cars. Call 419-384-3392. And our first quarter sponsor is Web Insurance Agency, serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years with offices in downtown Lima and Bluffton. Gilly Columbus Grove, the visitors, they come in at 13-9. They've won six of their last eight ball games. Gilly, they're playing really good basketball they're right now. They're playing really good basketball, partner. And like I said, I think it starts with Burnesser. You know, a lot of people don't understand. He's coming back from an ACL, Terry. Missed last year. And he's finally starting to produce. And I think with him producing and knocking shots down, it makes everybody else just a little bit better and gives them a little bit more depth off the bench. But uh, had them Saturday night partner, or excuse me, Friday night at Allen East, and uh, they look really, really good and beat a, a, a solid Allen East team by 16 on the road. And you take a look at the Bluffton Pirates, Gilly. No secret here. At one time, they were 15-1. and one. They took that really heartbreaking loss to Spencerville. They finished out their last seven games at 3-4 and four to finish the season 17-5. Look, we know they are one of the best teams in Northwest Ohio. They're loaded in every position. Well, and Donaldson, you know, he was dinged up for that period of time, and he appears to be back. And, you know, what an ideal time and a great opportunity for him to get back into the groove of things. But you got to like the play of what they get from their players, That especially Mr. Ginther at the, one of the guard spots, very athletic uh, guard. And everybody else just compliments him really well. And one of the things they are not afraid to do is let that thing rip from outside of 19-9. Let's take a look at our starting lineups tonight. For the visitors from Columbus Grove, they'll start off. Number one, Bo Burnesser, a 6'4 senior at 12.6 a game. Number two, Zach Reynolds is a 6'2 senior at 5.5 a game. Number three, Trenton Barraza is a 6'2 junior at 11.4. If that name seems familiar, he was a standout on the gridiron for the Bulldogs. Landon Best is a 5'11 sophomore at 9.5. And Kyle Hopkins is a 6'0 junior at 8.7. For the homestanding Bluffton Pirates, they'll go with number zero, Merrick Donaldson. 6'1 junior at 14.1 a game. Number three, Wade Ginther is a 6'1 senior at 11.7 a game. Number four, Taryn Boblin is a 6'1 junior at 6.6 a game. Blake Summers is a 6'5 junior at 14.8 a game. And rounding out the starting five, John Paul Yoder, a 6'4 senior at 4.9 a game. So, Gilly, this has turned into quite a rivalry on the football field and in the basketball arena. So, uh, settle in, partner. We're going to have a good one. We're going to have ourselves a dandy, partner. That's right. When we come back, we'll have tip-off for Buffalo High School. You're watching High School Basketball on WOSN. Welcome back to Bluffton High School to a sold-out gymnasium. Gilly, this crowd is overflowing. They've got them standing along the side. They've shut the doors. No one else can get in. High school basketball at its best. Yeah. You know, we're <laughs> sitting here not even running up down the floor. And guess what? I get a text from the principal saying, hey, it's going to get hot up there. All the stars are out tonight. we got Colin White from Ottawa Glandor. We've got several other coaches out here watching. So a big-time matchup here in Northwest Ohio. Our scoreboard sponsor tonight is Hawker Drywall and Plaster. Visit us at hawkerdrywall.com to see how we can help you. Gilly, let's take a look at the bracket, see where these guys go uh, and who they'll play next. Okay, first of all, this Northwest District, 
Division three bracket is broken down into three parts, Northwest one, Northwest two, and Northwest three, and that's where we're at this evening. The number one seed, Ottawa Glandorf, will play the winner of tonight's matchup between Van Buren and Bloomdale El uh, Elmwood, excuse me, on March the 1st at 7 p.m. Also in the top bracket is four seed Coldwater, who will await the winner of number six seed Carey and seven seed Liberty Benton right now playing at Carey. That too is the first at 7 p.m. In the bottom half, you've got Spencerville, the two seed. They are awaiting the winner of the nine seed Herod Allen East or the 11 seed Mount Blanchard Riverdale, which is playing tonight at Allen East. That game for, with Spencerville will be the first at 7 p.m. And then the big one tonight, we're seeing Bluffton, the five seed versus the eight seed Columbus Grove. They will take on, on the first, Haviland Wayne Trace, the three seed at Wayne Trace on the first at 7 p.m. So a lot of basketball action ahead of us, Gilly, on the road to University oh. of Dayton Arena. Gilly, let's take a look at our matchup tonight. These two teams played on February 9th. Grove with a somewhat, uh, uh, I don't want to call it an upset because Grove's been playing good, but record-wise it was an upset, and they, they win the game 47-35. Well, they, where they got it done, Danny, is they got it done at the defensive end of the floor. You're doing something right if you hold Bluffton to under 40 points, and I think that was the difference in the game, and if you would ask Columbus Grove coach, he'd say the same thing. We won at the defensive end. And Bluffton really struggles shooting the basketball that night. But again, Coach Boblett's going to be the first one to say, you know what? We didn't play very well that night, and Columbus, Columbus Grove deserved all the credit. So they got the rematch tonight. And let's see what happens tonight after 32 minutes of basketball. Yeah, absolutely. And that's my question to you, Gilly. So obviously everybody's thinking revenge from Bluffton. What if you're the Grove kids and the coach? What are you telling your kids, hey, we won a game already, but we got to go up against them again? Well, it's, you just got to play within yourself and do what, you know, do what's got you this current winning streak or to the point that you're playing very well and, you know, le lean off of that and, and then if you're Bluffton, you know, Coach Boblett, you know, is I'm sure he's motivated the kids. He didn't have to motivate them very much, you know, after what happened. They started out, like you said, exceptionally well, and then they went through a little lull period. Every team does sure, that, sure. and uh, along with injuries. But uh, tonight's a new night. Both teams are zero and zero, and it's that old philosophy again, and I'll say it again. It's one and done. That's you right. get 32 minutes tonight, whether you win by one or 30, it's, it, it's just uh, win in advance. Our officials tonight are some of the best. B.J. McFerrin, Asa Donaldson, and Kurt Bigelow. We are ready to tip this one underway. 2024 OHSAA State Tournament run. Here we go. And the Bulldogs control the trip. Tip, excuse me, this is Trenton Barraza. He's guarded up top by number five, Landon Worcester. They'll go Barraza. He'll dribble, drive, a little turnaround, tries to take it up, and they're going to get a travel call. Yeah, I, you could see what Trent tried to, do, tried to do. Excuse me. He tried to get into the box and do a little step through up and under after the pump fake. What a great job defending there by Merrick Donaldson right there holding his ground. And that Look. brings up our first call of the quarter. Product, production products in Grove is hiring, offering great opportunities to advance and free medical clinic. Apply today at midwayproducts.com. Productions products is our first call of the quarter. Little one, two, two, three quarter court press back to man to man. They'll push it inside. Gets good position. Shot goes up and he scores. John Paul Yoder with a big bucket. And the Pirates lead 2 nothing. You know, on the Hawker Drywall. He's scoreboard. a kid, Danny, that worked with us, you know, this past spring. And you know what? He, he's very unorthodox in the way he goes about things. The right there was a heady play with a head and shoulder fake and a strong post move. And as you see, the old fashioned three point play, great move there by, I call him JP, but it's John Paul. But that's a heck of a start if you're bluffing. John Paul Yoder with the first three of the game for the Pirates. They lead three nothing on the Hawker drywall scoreboard. There's a nice dribble drive to the right side, kick it back out. This is Landon Best up top with the ball, guarded by Boblett. 
Three ball from the corner from Reynolds. Shot goes off the mark. Rebound comes down. It's corralled by Taryn Boblett. He'll get it over to Merrick Donaldson. Merrick Donaldson is a heck of a player. First team all NWC. Gilly, he's the leader of this group. He's the leader of the group, and everybody else just plays along and plays right with him, and they play collectively very good basketball as a team. There's Bobla with the ball around the rim, excuse me, around the perimeter. He'll get it out to Donaldson. Donaldson will reset. Donaldson guarded up top by number two, Zach Reynolds. Boy, these names are all familiar. All these kids played football. What a rivalry these two schools oh, nice had. Nice hands right there. Looks like here to be Hopkins with the deflection. Rooster with the catch. And Merrick Donaldson knocks in the three. Our three sponsor tonight is Dale's Concrete and Decorative Stamping and Lipstick for all your commercial and residential concrete needs. Got a Actually, foul partner, I think that three was by number four. I think that was Boblet. Boblet with the three. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's okay from the top of the key. That's a big shot by that young man. A that's huge, his you're 29th right. three. The, the uh, PA announcer even said it was Merrick Donaldson. Yeah. Got it, but you're right. It was Boblet on the scoreboard. There's a steal. There's Boblet bringing the ball down the left side. He's going to go straight to the rim, loses the ball, takes it back, and it's swatted away. A big-time rejection by Bo Burnesser, and the Grove Bulldogs lose the ball again. Here comes Donaldson. We're back and forth in this one. 540. Merrick Donaldson from the top. Off the mark. Rebound comes down. Brought down by the Bulldogs. This is number 13 for Columbus Grove. Landon yeah, that, that one goes in. The roof comes off of this place. <laughs> right. Long right. before the rain and stuff tonight. Barraza up top, guarded by Wooster. He'll swing it out. There's Burnesser with a jumper. Off the mark. Rebound comes down to Donaldson. He's going to outlet it to Boblet. And right now they're winning, they're winning the defensive battle as far as forcing turnovers and also on the glass. Three ball from the right side by Wooster. It's off the mark. Rebound comes down, corralled by Trenton Barraza. He'll outlet it to Burnesser. Burnesser goes in, a little spin against Boblet, and he scores. Pretty move right there, avoiding contact, little left to right spin. Bo Kissed Burnesser. it off the glass. That's With a big bucket if you're Grove, getting on the scoreboard. 6-2 on the Hawker Drywall scoreboard. Here's Boblet, three ball from the left side. It's off the mark. Rebound comes down to Burnesser. Burnesser really controlling the paint on both ends of the floor right now for the Bulldogs. Yeah, little he is. Euro step there. And it's off the mark. Kyle oh, Hopkins with the shot. I think they got Yoder right there across the arm on the on the uh, shot. John Paul Yoder on the foul. That will send Kyle Hopkins to the Lee's Famous Recipe free throw line. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Dolphins, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where a home style happens here. So 6-4 with 4.41 to go. Danny Hobart, Darren Gilbert from Bluffton High School. Partner, you, you can't get another person in this gym. I, you know, I was up here for the Bluffton-Spencerville game, and it was packed. I think there's more people here tonight. I, I totally <laughs> agree with you. So Hopkins at the free throw line. You know, I was looking for Wade Ginther tonight. Is he even I, dressed? No, and, and we, we had put him in the starting lineup. That's what we got from okay. the AD. So but maybe it looks he's like, under the weather. It he, looks like uh, Worcester has started in. for him. Yeah, his brother is in the game right now. This is number one, Luke Ginther. Also in the game, number 23 for the Pirates. That is Brody Summers. Three ball off the mark. Hits the back of the glass there. Here come the Bulldogs down 6-4, 4.21 to go. This is Reynolds with the ball. He'll get it out to Kyle Hopkins. Long three ball off the mark, and it's corralled by Landon Best. Bandon going, excuse me, Best going up against Ginther. Trying to take him down low. Little spin move inside. Shot goes up, and it's good. Kyle Hopkins with a really nice shot. Excuse me, Landon Best. Excuse me, Landon Best with the shot. Makes it 6-6 with 3.59 to go. Yeah, got into the paint right there. Went up strong with it. Converted it. Here's Summers. Foul line extended. He'll get it back out to Merrick Donaldson. Donaldson gets a screen from Summers. He'll go Ginther on the right side. They like to put Summers at the high post, Brody Summers, that is. They'll put him at the high post and let him create. He does yeah, a nice they, job. They, they really like to use that scissor cut action from the high post. One thing about Coach Bobler, he's got a playbook that is thick, probably <laughs> 50 pages, and if you're a coach trying to scout it, it drove me absolutely nuts because he, <laughs> he just runs so many doggone sets, so you got to pick the ones, be picky and choosy and just try to prepare the best that you can for a contest like this. Landon Best will 
Kick it over to Reynolds. Reynolds on the right side. He'll dribble drive baseline. Kick it back out. He's guarded by Carey Wright. There's a three ball on the top of the key. Off the mark. Rebound comes down to Donaldson. And Donaldson will bring it down. He'll get it out to the younger Ginther. Ginther a little spin move into the paint. Thought about taking it up. Loses the ball. And it's controlled by the Grove Bulldogs. Bring it down. Shot goes up. Off the mark. And <laughs> corralled by Blake Summers. He was just right place, right time, Gilly. Yes, yes, he was. And the officials are being very consistent and letting them play. Luke Ginther gets it over to Brody Summers. Back to Blake Summers. Back over to Donaldson. Donaldson, such a tough matchup out there. He's got length and he can handle the ball. This is Blake Summers. The yeah, left that's a really shooter. good matchup right there with Barraza. Brody Summers up and under, shot goes up, and he's going to get fouled. And the foul is going to go against number 21, and that is Kyle Hopkins for the Grove Bulldogs. Pretty good footwork right there by Brody Summers. A little up and under action there. Going to get two free throws as a result. So Brody Summers will go to the free throw line. Brody is a 6-2 junior. 67% from the charity stripe for that young man. Just converted the first one. Makes it 7-6 on the Hawker Drywall scoreboard. Summers will let the second one fly. And he misses that one. Rebound comes down to Trenton Barraza. Barraza gets it over to Kyle Hopkins. Hopkins will bring it down. Guarded by Ginther out top. This is Barraza with the ball. There's a three ball from the left side. It's off the mark. Rebound comes down. It's corralled by Reynolds. He gets it over to Barraza. Barraza jumper from the left side, and it's good. Trent Barraza. That yeah, young so man quick. is an athlete. He's so quick with the first step. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. He did that the other night. He is right-handed. He goes to his left and pulls up on a dime. Big shot. Here come the Pirates. They get the ball down low, and we're going to get a foul on, looks like on Barraza maybe. And we've got an injured Bulldog. Yeah, that, I think that was Best come down on his shoulder. You're right. I think you're right. It was Landon He reacted Best. to that pump fake and got caught in midair and come down hard on that left shoulder. And they're saying the foul is on Landon Best. Entering the game now for the Grove Bulldogs is Evan Souter. And John Paul Yoder will come back in with Wooster back in for the Pirates. Good minutes out of Kerry Wright. We've seen him play a lot for the Pirates this year. So Ginther will inbounds it underneath their basket, gets it to Blake Summers, and he'll get it over to Boblett. Boblett will set the offense up. 154 to go. Bluffton, excuse me, Columbus Grove, 8-7 on the Hawker Drywall scoreboard. They'll go down low to the post to Blake Summers, and he loses his footing, slips, and he loses the ball. Barraza corrals it for the Bulldogs. He's going to bring it down and just take it all the way in left hand and scores. What Trent Barraza, are you kidding right me? There. Left hand. Trent Barraza gives the Grove Bulldogs the 10-7 lead on the Hawker Drywall scoreboard. Boy, you're seeing the quickness out of the Grove Bulldogs, Gilly, and well, they are the taking advantage of it. Well, the athleticism, we have so many athletes on the floor right now. Great pass. Great pass from Ginther into John Paul Yoder, and he makes it 10-9 on the Hawker Drywall scoreboard. Back and forth we go from Bluffton High School. Here come the dogs. They'll bring the ball down. Barraza goes inside. It's an inside to... Kyle Mays, Mays with a little half hook. It goes off the mark, and Summers corrals it with his left hand. Didn't have to jump high for that one. The 6'5 junior just rallies and gets the ball. Here's Ginther on the right side of the three line. Gets it inside to Wooster. Wooster a little turnaround. He's going to take the shot up and muscles him. Nice job there by Landon Wooster. The football standout shows you why he's in the weight room. He muscles that one up, and he gives the Pirates the 11-10 lead. Yeah, he wasn't going to be denied that deep. He's going to be strong with it. Take it up. There's a nice dribble drive and a bucket. Kyle Hopkins for the Dogs takes it in, and he's going to go to the line for an old-fashioned three, and the Dogs are back in front 12-11. Yeah, he saw the mismatch right there with uh, John Paul on him and just beating to the rim, kissed it high and soft. I think that's number two on Yoder. Yes, it is. That Tough is break for that young man because he's got a quick four for Bluffton. They'll bring Kerry Wright back into the game. And, and the good thing about it, Kerry Wright's played a lot of minutes for this Pirates team. And, and so they're not losing a lot of athletic ability or scoring. You're losing size, but not a lot of athletic ability. That's and a great point. Kyle Hopkins knocks that one in from the Leeds Famous Recipe free throw line. 
comes the one, two, two, three quarter court. And they're so effective with this gilly because they've got length and they've got size, or excuse me, speed, and they'll trap in the corner just like they do, but they're gonna get Mays on the foul. Yeah, I think they got Mays right there with a the reach in. So that'll be the first on Kylan Mays. 13, 11, 23 seconds to go here in the first quarter. Danny Holbrook, Darren Gilbert from a sold out Bluffton gymnasium. First round of the OHSA state playoffs. Boy, you can tell the excitement in the air. You know, they were wrapped all the way around this gym, Gilly. They were lined up before we got here. I didn't think we were going to get in. <laughs> well, I texted I text the superintendent. I said, what door do I come in? <laughs> he texts me back. Here's Donaldson with the ball up top, guarded by Zach Reynolds. We're down to nine seconds. He goes over to Ginther on the right side. Ginther goes into Wooster. Wooster at the foul line. We're down to four seconds. Wooster, little up and under, takes it with the left hand, and he scores. Landed. Wooster, are you kidding me? And he ties it up. After one quarter of play from Bluffton High School, we're all knotted at 13. You're watching High School Basketball on WOSC. Welcome back to Bluffton High School. Tonight's three-point sponsor is Dale's Concrete and Decorative Stamping Ellipsic for all your commercial residential concrete needs. Our timeout sponsors, Metzger Financial Services. Helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. Metzger, Finan Metzger Financial is our timeout sponsor. We have so many sponsors, Gilly, I'm just Love it. I'm tongue tied. Love it because you know what? We don't get the sponsors. We can't put the broadcast right. on. So That's we right. greatly appreciate it. We love our sponsors. You know, really. you made a great point. You know, Bluffton looking at their looking at the personnel. He can go as nine deep. Absolutely. Very many high school teams can say that and consistently throw players out there. That simply means you've got basketball players with high IQs that have the ability to do certain things on the floor and Makes your coach a little bit easier. Merrick Donaldson on the left side knocks in the triple. Another Dale's concrete three-point goal. It makes it 16-13 on the Hucker Drywall scoreboard. Shots make coaches like that look <laughs> really <laughs> good, don't they? Uh, our second quarter sponsor is Web Insurance Agency, serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years with offices in downtown Lima. Nice move, Bluffton. finger roll there by Burn Esser. Burn Esser Put it on it the floor, got to the rim with it. Makes it 16-15 on the Hawker Drywall scoreboard. They'll swing it over to Boblet. Boblet thought about going Summers in the corner. He's guarded up top by Landon Best. Good matchup of two young athletes out there. They'll go Wooster at the foul line. This is Boblet from top of the key, and he knocks it in. Taryn Boblet knocks in another Dale's Concrete three, and he makes it 19 15 he, on the Hucker Here would be scoreboard. my concern, Danny, is that Bluffton starts shooting the ball really well from the three. You're almost going to have to change your defensive philosophy and start playing over the top of the screens versus going and underneath. That was a big time play right there by Mays as he grabs the rebound and puts it back up, and it's 19 17 on the Hucker Drywall scoreboard. Tonight's premier sponsor. And there's another bucket by Wooster. Tonight's premier sponsor is Northwest Ohio Recycling in Pandora, paying top dollar for aluminum, copper, brass, scrap iron, and scrap power. Give yeah, that young man a quick four, three, six. Nine, two. Absolutely. 21-17 on the Hawker Drywall scoreboard. This is Barraza with the ball. He'll swing it back over. Three ball on the way, and it's off the mark. Rebound comes down to Landon Wooster, who's played a heck of a first half here for the Pirates. Gets it to Boblet. Boblet kicks it back out. Merrick Donald's from way downtown. It's off the mark. Rebound comes down to Boblet. He's going to take it back up. A little spin move, and it goes out of bounds, and it's going to go back to Columbus Grove. Yeah, he got himself caught in midair and had no choice. <laughs> I'm sure that wasn't one of the best shots <laughs> no. that Coach Boblet <laughs> you know, has seen, right. but you know what? He had no choice, and he tried to save it after throwing it up towards the rim, and he's laughing about it. He knows. <laughs> That'll make, bring up our first call of the second quarter, brought to you by Production Products and Grove. They are hiring, offering great opportunities to advance, and a free on-site medical clinic apply today at Midwest Products. Wow, nice little step back by Barraza. Barraza knocks in a triple, and it's 21-20 with 5.35 to go on the Hucker Drywall scoreboard. Give him seven. 
So here come the Pirates, back and forth we go. This is Wooster, he's wide open for a three. Off the mark, rebound comes down to Brody Summers, takes it back up, and he's blocked! What a big time block by 13, number 13 for the Grove Bulldogs. Yeah, that was Landon Best with the block, and then they saw a streak in Burnesser. Threw a little pass down the floor. He ran underneath it and converted it at the rim. This is Boblet, a little foul line jumper. It's good, Taryn Boblet. Well, that's a big shot, because I'll tell you, Burnesser's right there on him defensively. Back and forth we go, 23-22. There's another three ball for the dog. Oh, my goodness! That young man is Johnny Appleseed. He's planting threes, I'm Gilly. telling you. <laughs> Yeah, you're not going to see a 42 to 39 game tonight, I'm afraid. Here's Donaldson with the, or excuse me, this is Wooster, and BJ McFerrin says it's going to be a foul. Ah, on that's the floor. Hopkins, I think, on the grab. If that's the case, that's number two, I believe. 23 25, Grove with the okay, two point. Okay, my advantage. apologies, that's his first. They're going to bring John Paul Yoder back in, and remember, Gilly, he's got two fouls. So this is really important for the Bluffton Pirates as John Paul Yoder comes back into the game for Brody Summers. Oh, nice, nice slip. What a nice slip screen there, and the Pirates score. We're all knotted at 25 on the Hawker Drive all scoreboard. How about this? Yoder was seven. This is Barraza up top, guarded by Wooster. Dribble drive to the left side, takes it in. Nice, pretty underhand move by Trenton Barraza. And he gets the Grove Bulldogs the 27-25 lead on the hot and dry wall scoreboard. Yeah, the old finger roll. Here's Wooster, takes it back up. Thought it had his guy in the air. This is Blake Summers off the mark. Rebound comes down to Zach Reynolds. That's a big time rebound for the dog. They'll outlet it to Barraza. Barraza dribble drives and they're gonna get Wooster on the foul as Barraza was taking it to the rim. Gilly, back and forth we go, the pace. Who's the pace favorite right now? My opinion, yes. Grove. Grove. But it can change at any point, you know? Sure, absolutely. 3.56 to go, entering the game now for Bluff. You can see a little extra hop in her step from oh, that yeah, block yeah. shot by Best for and sure. the breakout by Burnesser. Luke Ginther enters the ball game now, comes in for Wooster, and Ginther will go out and guard the ball. He will take Kyle Hopkins. Hopkins thought about trying to push it into the low post. They got Barraza posting up on Boblet, and they're going to lob it into him. Great position. Trent Barraza, Gilly right now, he is just owning the paint, and he is scoring a will. Well, He's got 11 and, already. And, and you noticed, I don't think you saw, but they went to a triangle in two, and they just could not stop it. Nice move there by Mary Donaldson. Donaldson scores, and Bluffton's going to take a timeout. There's your timeout on the floor. We'll take a timeout here in the booth. You're watching High School Basketball on WSN. Quarter sponsor is Web Insurance Agency, serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years with offices in downtown Lima and Bluffton. Here we go, partner. 27-29. Grove leads by two. They've got the ball with 3:22 to go here. Appears to be they're going back to a little flat 3-2. A little bit. I was going to say it's a little flat 3-2. You're absolutely right. They've got Donaldson up top, and he's falling back on the foul line. They'll go inside to Barraza, and he oh, scores again. Oh, what a again. pass! Trenton Barraza is just. Feasting right now. He's got 13 of the 31 points for the Grove Bulldogs. They lead 31 27 on the Hawker Drive all scoreboard. I think they got best there with the hold inside on. I think you're right, Landon Best. Yoder. That's his second foul. That's a huge foul. You just wonder if they'll stay with him with 258 until halftime. And no, they're going to go. You just got your end. answer, didn't you? Yeah, I did. Evan Souter is going to come in the game now for the Bulldogs. And Landon Best will take a seat. He better take a seat because I have six guys on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not real sure he knew he was coming in for him. So Donaldson's going to trigger the ball underneath their basket. Gets it into Ginther. Ginther three ball from the right side. And it's good. Luke Ginther knocks in the triple. And it's 31-30 with 2.50 to go on the Hawker Drywall scoreboard. Grove still with a one-point lead. And you know what? Wade may not be playing or even dressed tonight, but there's nobody that's going to be any prouder than his older brother. Absolutely. You know, of his younger brother and... They're both great kids. It's unfortunate. You know, we don't know anything well, yeah, about, we don't, we don't have any idea. about Wade, but something obviously because that kid's not going to miss a tournament game. There's a step back three by Kyle Hopkins that goes off the mark. 
and it goes out of bounds, and it's going to go back to the Bluffton Pirates. So the Pirates have a chance to take the lead here with 2.27 to go. What a game we've had here from Bluffton High School, this first half of basketball action. The Pirates and the Bulldogs in a classic rematch of a battle earlier this year on February 9th, which Grove won. There's a loose ball on the floor, and the Bulldogs will get it. They'll bring it down. This is Hopkins guarded by Ginther up top. Both thought about a step back there. This is Souter with the dribble drive to the foul line. Cross pass to Zach Reynolds. Misses the shot. Rebound comes down, and it's corralled. <laughs> Burnesser grabs the, I thought Bluffton had the rebound. Burnesser gets his hand in there and gets an easy bucket to make it 33-30 on the Hawker Drywall scoreboard. Yeah, that's just one of those where they couldn't secure it. Nice steal there by Kyle Hopkins. Hi, Hopkins, yeah. And, and right now, Grove's intensity is just another level right now, defensively and offensively. There's Barraza with the ball, guarded by Boblet. He'll go Kyle Hopkins. Hopkins goes backside, gets it inside to Reynolds, and he scores. Zach Reynolds, the big man, knocks in the bucket, makes it 35-30. Those are Reynolds' first two points of the night. Well, they were really, really strong two points, too. He could have flipped it. John Paul Yoder tried to get a streaking carry right to the bucket ball goes out this is Barraza he'll dribble drive kick it over to Souter Souter from the three line on the right side off the mark rebound comes down to Barraza Barraza gets it he's looking at his teammates trying to find out he's going to spin little turn around and he's got it Trent Barraza's got 15 on the night and we got a timeout on the floor the Grove Bulldogs have up their lead to 37 30. we'll be back with further action right after these messages Welcome back to Bluffton High School, where with 56 seconds to go until halftime, the Grove Bulldogs have upped their lead to 37-30. And some of you may have noticed that uh, standout player for the uh, Bluffton Pirates, Wade Ginther, has not played tonight. And we're going to effort at halftime to find out what has happened, if he's, if he's ill or if he's hurt or whatever. We're going we're gonna to try to do our best to find out. And there's I mean, that's eleven point seven points per ball game. Oh, absolutely! Partner, he's, he's a really nice player. Eighty free throw attempts, plus he throws in four point four rebounds. And I'm not taking anything away from Grove. No, no, you no. Know, because we're, what they've done, Mays is pretty gets the special. loose ball, and oh, we got a timeout. Time we're going to keep it right here, Gilly, uh, with twenty nine seconds to go. So, so we'll effort to find out. Stick around at halftime. We're going to have an interview with Ohio State commit Colin White. He's going to come over to the booth. We're going to talk about everything Ohio State. We're going to talk about his team's chances in the upcoming tournament. Nice Be interesting talk. interesting see what he says about yeah, Sunday's yeah. win at Michigan State. Absolutely. So stick around for that. You'll probably see him in Columbus on Sunday. I'm sure he's going to head down to the Michigan game. Yep, I will be at the Michigan-Ohio State game on Sunday. So, uh, yeah. Hey, we had a great time at that Purdue game. We Thanks did. to Miles. And <laughs> Fantastic job. I call them ding-dongs, the other ding-dongs that went with it. I'm telling you what, it was a great time. A fun time when we all get together and do that kind of stuff. So 29 seconds to go. Grove leads 37-30. My and, question uh, is, do they play for one shot here? Well, with a seven-point lead, Gilly, I, I'm absolutely. I'm on the road. I've got a hostile crowd here. Yeah, I'm playing for one yeah, shot. Yeah, because, I mean, there's only, what, three fouls committed yeah. by both ball clubs here in this first yeah. half. Or excuse me, second quarter. This is Landon Best. Oh, they oh, throw the ball boy. almost away, and Barraza corrals it. He's guarded by Wooster out top, and he's going to get it over to Kyle Hopkins. We're down to 13 seconds. Hopkins give it back to Barraza. Barraza with the ball. He's got 15 on the afternoon already. This is Barraza, dribble drive baseline, skip pass, and it's intercepted. And Carey Wright grabbed it, but he went out of bounds. The momentum of his of the play took him out of bounds. He tried. He did he sure the best did. that he could do right there. Nice read on that backside. They, what they were doing is driving baseline and going to skip it out the backside along the baseline. Great read there by Carey Wright. Best is going to trigger the ball in. He gets it inside to Burnesser, and Burnesser loses the ball. Comes down to Carey Wright. He's going to try to get one off from three-quarter, and it's off the mark. So after one half of play from Bluffton High School, the Columbus Grove Bulldogs lead the Bluffton Pirates 37-30. We'll be back for second half action right after these messages.
Welcome back to Bluffton High School. We're here with our special guest for the halftime show, Colin White from the Ottawa Glendorf Titans. Colin, thanks a lot for taking, spending a little time with us this evening. Uh, no problem, no problem. Just watching some good basketball. Absolutely. So. Both teams really, really playing good basketball right now. Got a Putnam County foe over there. You got any, you're rooting for one or the other? Uh, <laughs> no, I, I got no. Uh, just watching basketball. It's, Absolutely. Uh, so it's a good game. Absolutely. Well, let's talk about you and your future. The big news out of Columbus this week, uh, last week, with Coach Holtman uh, stepping down, basically being uh, fired. I don't like to use those words, but that's what happened. Um, how has that affected you in the last couple of weeks? You know, it's been a, a really hectic, I, especially last week. You know, the news came out Wednesday or the week before that. New, news came out on a Wednesday, and it was just, it was, a, it was a wild day. You know, a lot of calls, a lot of, a lot of texting, not a lot of, not a lot. You don't know what's going on. So. Uh, yeah. It was a hectic week, and now it's kind of calmed down a little bit. You know, got a plan of attack, and the, the organization, Ohio State, has a plan of attack. So, you know, it's kind of calmed down, but it, it, it was a hectic week yeah. or so. And, and I'm sure you've talked to Coach Diebler. What a, what a great guy. I've had him on the radio show before. He's a really good guy. I'm sure. Have you talked to him about any of this stuff? Oh, yeah. We talk every day. Me and Coach, yeah. we call, we talk, we text. And, and he's a great guy, and he, he answers a lot of my questions. Uh, truthfully, he's not going to sugarcoat anything, yeah. that's for sure. And. You know, he's a great coach. He's, he's doing well right now, and, and he's a great guy. So, you know, happy that that guy's kind of on my side. Sure. So, OG, ready for the tournament run. What's the mood of practice right now? You guys got some big wins here at the end of the season. You know, it's uh, the mood's just just a light mood right now. You know, we're just just ready to play, ready to ready to go out there and play. You know, just watching the game tonight, you know, you get that itch to be out there sure. on the court. And Friday's going to be a fun night, and then hopefully we can win and make it to a district semi. So. Colin, how, how, how has it been for you and your family handling all the notoriety and the publicity? And, and you seem like you just take it in stride. We talked to your coach yesterday on the radio show, and he's just so proud of the effort that you've given and, and how you treat people. And how's it all worked out for you? You know, it's, it's kind of been a, a seamless type thing. You know, just uh, the, my parents instilled a character in me when I was young, and, you know, I don't have to be anyone else but that. And so as long as I, I'm myself, I feel like, a, you know, the world will like me in a, in a way. But... You no, know, it's uh, just the character that my parents instilled in me and coach instilled in me since a young age. So, you know, you take it with grace, you take it with humbleness, and, and you know, really uh, you have fun with it. So back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back state uh, appearances, going for number four here. Want to get the job done this year. For sure. That's the goal. <laughs> that's the goal, get the job done. And, you know, haven't been able to the last couple of years, but, you know, that's the, that's the end goal. That's the goal in mind for us. Yeah, so I've, I've got to cover quite a few of your games this year, and the progression of some of the guys, the lesser-known guys that are stepping up. Fantastic job by Grady Tomazos, Wagner, you know, and of course you and the, the rest of the guys, but really some, some guys have stepped up this year. For sure, and I feel like people are just getting more and more confident game by game. You know, I feel like we're really hitting our stride right now. You know, you want to play your best basketball in late February and in March, so... No, I feel like we're gonna we're doing that right now, and the guys are confident, and we're ready to go. That's awesome, Colin. Thanks a lot for taking some time down with us, guys. This is a winner right here, Colin White from the Ottawa Glendale Titans. We'll be back for second half action right after these messages. Welcome back to. Left in high school, where after one half of play, the Columbus Grove Bulldogs lead 37 30. Our big name sponsor tonight is Northwest Ohio Recycling in Pandora, paying top dollar for aluminum, copper, brass, scrap iron, and scrap cars. Call 419 384 3392. Our quarter sponsor for the third quarter is the Web Insurance Agency, serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years. We'll have in downtown Lima and Bluffton. Stick around after the game. We'll be giving out our Stolly Hustle Award. You can check out tonight's highlights on the Stolly Hustle Award on the WSN YouTube page. So, Gilly, here we go, brother. Second half action, and the uh, Road Bulldogs a heck of a first half. Yeah, you know what? Extending that thing to seven points on the road. You know, now they've just got to take care of the basketball. And I can guarantee Coach Boblin's got them motivated to pick it up at the defensive end of the floor, and they just forced a quick turnover. Let's see if they can't convert. This is Boblet from the left side, and it's good. Taryn Boblet knocks in the triple, and right away, the Pirates score the big triple. Another Dale's concrete three-point goal makes it 37-30 on the Hawker Drywall scoreboard. Yeah, that's a big bucket right there to start this third quarter. This is Hopkins, almost a foul there by Wooster, but they don't, there's no call. Ball swatted back to the dogs, and it goes through the hands of Trenton Barraza, but they're going to say it was last touch by Kerry Wright and the Bluffton Pirates. Trenton Barraza, what a heck of a first half. 15 points to lead the dogs, and he was everywhere, Gilly. Well, he got 15, and 
Also, Burnesser had Burnesser, 11. Yeah. Excuse me. Yeah, yeah I couldn't, had couldn't spit that one out. Yeah. <laughs> That's all right. That's 26 of the 37. Here's yeah, they're really turning it up defensively now. This is Hopkins with the ball up top, guarded by Merrick Donaldson, gets a screen from Burnesser. They'll go back, Burnesser, Burnesser top of the key. Off the mark, rebound comes down to Wooster, and here come the Pirates with a chance to cut into this lead. This is Boblett, he just had the first three of the second half, and we're gonna get a foul down low. If that's, that's best, is that number three? Landon best, you're right. Foul is yeah, on. he presents, John Paul Yoder presents a challenge inside because he is just so doggone physical and plays relentless basketball. That's, that's, you know, that's that's a big one. That's only two, isn't it? Yes, it's only two. That's our first call of the quarter. Well, sponsored by Production Products in Grove. They are hiring, offering great opportunities to advance and a free on-site medical clinic. Apply today at Midwest MidwayProducts.com. This is Kerry Wright. He's guarded by Barraza. Gets it over to Wooster. Trying to get it into John Paul Yoder, and they're going to get Kyle Hopkins on the foul. And uh, there was some uh, some banging back and forth oh, there. That's, yeah. And that's what that's what John Cole does so well. Here go block to block. Here set screens, and he's one of those type of post players. He can be very annoying to a defender because he wants he enjoys contact. And they're going to bring in number ten, Kylan Mays. Now uh, that's a, a, a bigger body. Yeah, that's a heck of a matchup too. There's some big bodies there. Oh yeah. And Yoder trying to get position, and Mays holding his own. Thirty-seven. Oh, yeah. During practice time, partner. <laughs> in the spring, those two will go at it. 37-33. Yoder trying to get position, calling for the ball. This is Donaldson. He gets a screen from Yoder. They'll swing it over to Carey Wright. Three ball on the way, and it's good. Carey Wright. The left-handed sharpshooter knocks it in, makes it 37-36, another Dale's Concrete three. Two big threes to start this uh, third quarter for Bluffton, got him right back into it, down one. This is Barraza with a dribble drive and he misses a shot, rebound comes down to Donaldson. Columbus Grove's coaching staff imploring the referees, they wanted a foul on that shot. They go inside to Yoder, Yoder's gonna go under the basket, they're gonna get Mays on the push. Yoder tried to go baseline, Gilly, and Mays used his body, and that's where they got the foul. Yeah, he tried to push him to the baseline to take it away, but, you know, JP being a left-hander, he likes that baseline drive. JP's going to get a quick blow. They brought in, I think it was... The Brody Summers. Yeah, Brody, yeah, Brody Summers, Summers in. And Blake Summers is not on the floor right now for the Pirates. We did get confirmation that Wade Ginther is ill tonight. That's why he is not playing, so we did get that. Here's Boblet with a jumper, a foul line jumper. Taryn Boblet gives the Pirates the 38-37 lead. Boblet's got 13, and he is playing great. 8-0 run right now by the home standing Pirates. Both these student sections are on their feet and they are loud and proud as we got a dandy from Bluffton High School. Here's Barraza, he'll dribble drive right side. Loses the ball, he gets it back. Boblet guarding him. A lot of action in the, late, in the low post and it looks like they're gonna get. I think it's Boblet, I believe. Boblet or right on the foul. Let's see what BJ McFerrin calls and he's gonna say Taryn Boblet on the foul. You saw that coming, they were banging bodies oh, the whole way going, down. They're going after both teams. This is a this is turning into a really really physical game, but the officials are not it's letting it get out of control, no. and it's a really well won't. played game. Absolutely. So Trenton Barraza will go to the Lee's famous recipe free throw line. First one on the way, and it's good. Tonight's free throw sponsor is Lee's famous recipe chicken in Lima, Wapak, Memphis, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. Home style happens here. Jacob getting a little hungry with the Lee's Famous Recipe read, ain't you? I am too. I am too. Yeah, Coach Bob wanted that one on the floor, and you're not going to change those three officials' minds. No. Boblet knocks both of them in, and he gives the Bulldogs the 39-38 lead with 5.07 to play. Give that young man 17. He's played a fantastic game for the Columbus Grove Bulldogs. His quickness is so apparent on the floor, Gilly. The Pirates having trouble manning up with him, and here... A lot of physicality there. Here's Landon Wooster with a little spin drive there. He misses that shot. Rebound comes down to Barraza. Barraza guarded out by Wooster. Here's Hopkins. Little dribble drive to the middle. He knocks it in. Nice Kyle Hopkins floater. with a floater. And he gives the Grove Bulldogs the 41-38 lead. And the Bulldogs, every time the Pirates respond, they come back. 
Yeah, they, they needed one right there. You know, everything has shifted to the home, home team and the home crowd. Here's right from the left side, and it's off the mark. Rebound comes down, it goes out of bounds, and they're going to say it stays with Bluffton. So yeah. Kurt Bigelow right there on the call. Uh -huh. yeah. It, yeah, it was off Burnesser. Yeah, like we get paid to watch these games, brother. How's it getting any better than this? Uh, it doesn't get any better than this, does it? <laughs> We're going to be together for the oh, week. We're going to be together all tournament trail here, Gilly. They got us matched up with a lot of games here. This is Donaldson. Dribble drive, Fallon kicks it over to Wooster. Wooster goes baseline, spins around, goes up, and he's going to be fouled. And yeah, the foul's yeah. going to go against Burnesser. Yeah, he got him leaning, got him in the air. And that's what uh, Coach is, is talking about. He wants him to play straight up. Once you lean a little bit and your hands aren't vertical, the official's going to get you. Landon Wooster will go to the Leeds Famous Recipe free throw line, and he will make the first. My goodness. Used it all, didn't he? <laughs> that bounced around for a day and a half, hey. Gilly. Rim, backboard, rim, <laughs> in. Landon Wooster played a, has played a great game for the Pirates tonight. Uh, he's got seven on the evening, and they needed that with Ginther out of the ballgame. And the second was on the way, and it's good. Makes it 41-40. Luke Ginther will come in the game Goodness. for Landon Wooster, and Wooster deserves Coach that Bob, break. man, he's getting his exercise up and down the floor. <laughs> hey, we got two really good coaches here tonight. Oh, absolutely. For Bluffton, Todd Boblett, and for Grove, Connor Cole. So both of them very intense coaches. And uh, got a good matchup out here with Barraza and Ginther. This is Hopkins yeah, gets a little screen. Tri little yeah. triangle in two. Hopkins swings it over to Zach Reynolds. They're playing off Reynolds. He's going to dribble drive the foul, and he gets Barraza cutting to the rim, and we're going to get a foul. They're going to get John Paul Yoder, I believe. No, they're going to get uh, Luke Ginther on the foul. My apologies. Bean Ginther. It's what they call him. It's what they call him. Yep, his first. So Zach Reynolds will trigger the ball in underneath their basket. Gets it over to Hopkins. Hopkins guarded by Mary Donaldson. They're going to foul got off JP. the ball. Yeah, I think you're right. There's a lot of physicality down low. And B.J. McFerrin says, not today, boys. Hey, this, this crew's doing a great job, Gilly. They really oh, they are. are. They're letting them play, but they're being very consistent. Yeah, they, they, this is a great crew. So Brody Summers, uh, some more size will come in for the Pirates, and John Paul Yoder will take a seat. He's got three fouls, Gilly. That's a concern right now for Coach Boblett. You know, I'm trying to pick up if he's playing the triangle and two, if he's playing soft man with three and then two aggressive denial with the other two. Barraza dribble drives foul and throws the ball away, and it's corralled by Donaldson. Donaldson gets it over to Boblett, and Grove leads 41-40 with 3.35 to go. Yeah, that was a, a, a spacing mistake there by Grove. Got, got a poor angle. That, uh, that was the, 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 the turnover right there, the cause of it. This is Summers with the ball, gets it over to Bobbitt. Bobbitt left alone, he's going to dribble drive, foul line, shot goes up, and it's off the mark. Rebound comes down, Brody Summers, that's a big boy rebound, and Kalen Mays on the foul, and he's saying I had my hands up. Yeah, the they're going time. at it inside, yeah, they are. aren't they? Yeah, they're, they're two similar body types, and they are really going at it down low. This is fun to watch, Gilly. Yeah, it is fun to watch. <laughs> they're going to bring Landon Wooster back in the game. and uh, Yeah, I'm wondering, I'm just wondering a little bit if... Uh, Mr. Summers, Blake, if he's not feeling a little under the weather, because we yeah, haven't we seen have, him in this third quarter. we have not seen Blake Summers in this uh, quarter. So I... Uh, and, and it's going around everywhere, partner. I yeah. mean, it's influenza, and it's been it's been brutal in the school districts. So Brody Summers will go to the line at the least famous recipe free throw line. First one on the way. And it's good. Yeah, really good free throw shooter. Hadn't shot a lot of them, but the ones he's attempted, 67%. Two out of every three he's went in. Makes it 41 all. 313 to go here in the third quarter. And Summers will get the second one from the Lee's famous recipe free throw line, and it is good. So the Pirates will take the lead at 42-41. Dan Hilbert, Darren Gilbert from Bluffton High School with 3-10 to play here in the third quarter. This back and forth action of these two Northwest Conference rivals. 
This is run, or excuse me, this is Hopkins. Jumper is good. Kyle Hopkins. Nice Knocks move in. there yeah, by was. Hopkins right there. Give him nine, but really good job with just body control. Summers with the ball, hands it off to Merrick Donaldson. Donaldson thought about taking the shot. We're going to go back to Wooster. Nobody's stepping out on Wooster. He's dribble driving, he falls down, and we're going to get a travel. And now that's, that's one of those where he tried to dribble and attack and went into a, looked like a little double team action. I think he thinks the floor may, may have some well, moisture on it. Gilly, I'll, I'll be honest with you. It, it, it feels like 110 degrees in here. You know, you're sweating, oh. I'm sweating. These kids are sweating hard. I mean, this, this place is jam-packed. 2.39 to go. Our scoreboard sponsor tonight is Hawker Drywall and Plastering. Visit us at hawkerdrywall.com to see how we can help you. Hawker Drywall and Plastering, our scoreboard sponsor. This is Hopkins guarded out top by Donaldson. 2.30 to go. Grove leads 43-42, Hopkins three ball. Oh my goodness, another Dales concrete three. It makes it 46-42 on the Hawker Drywall scoreboard. He's got 12 on the night. Yeah, he's starting to feel it now. This is Ginther, gets it, goes over to Wright. Wright guarded by Burnester. Wright's gonna dribble drive, kick it back out to Wooster. Wooster looks over to Summers. Summers with the ball up top. Gets it over to Ginther. This Good job Eric. closing out right there by the Bulldogs on the three-point line. 150 to go. Nice Great cut, cut by Summers. And sure was. Burn Esser was just a little bit late, but what a cut by Brody Summers. And it makes it 46-44 on the Hawker Drywall scoreboard. Grove leads by two. Well, it was a great read because Mays turned his back, and as soon as he turned his back, he just rolled right to the bucket. Evan Souter knocks in the 12-footer, and he gives the Bulldogs the 48-44 lead with 127 to go. It's two big points there by that young man, giving him solid minutes off the bench. Brody Summers with the drive, and he scores. Brody Summers was guarded by three people. I don't know how he got that shot off. And he makes it 48-46 on the Hawker Drywall scoreboard. Yeah, he muscled his way to the rim. This is Hopkins with a nice dribble drive. Kyle Hopkins. He's doing it all right now for the Bulldogs, and they got a 50-46 lead. Hopkins has got 14. This is right from the left side. Off the mark. Rebound comes down to Burnesser, and the Dogs will slow it down with 50 seconds to go. Hopkins guarded by Donaldson up top. What a matchup of two really athletic players. He'll hand him off the right. Kalen Mays thought about taking the three. There was nobody on him, Gilly. I think I took that one. Well, <laughs> I don't sure know. Not, you had yeah. the head coach looking right at him. <laughs> well, I'm just saying I would have shot him. I don't know what Kalen was going to do. Here's Hopkins. Goes behind his back. We're going to get Ginter on the foul out top with 26 seconds to go. Boblet and Not John a bad Paul foul Yoder. right there. You know yeah. why? Because you know sure. they had they had the opportunity right there to get a possible steal. Now they can't afford to do it now. Because it would put them in the the bonus. Here comes Grove with 22 seconds to go. Gets it over to Reynolds. Reynolds guarded by John Paul Yoder. They hold the ball, waiting for that last shot. They're up 50-46 on the Hawker Drywall scoreboard. This is Hopkins, down to eight. Hopkins guarded by Summers. Hopkins up top. Three ball on the way, and it's off the mark, and he misses everything, and that's how the third quarter ends. After three quarters of play from Clemson High School, the Columbus Grove Bulldogs lead 50-46. We'll be back with fourth quarter action right after these messages. Welcome back to Clemson High School. Our fourth quarter sponsor tonight is Web Insurance Agency, serving Lyman and Allen County for over 100 years, obviously downtown Lyman and Bluffton. And our premier sponsor tonight is Northwest Ohio Recycling and Pandora, paying top dollar for aluminum, copper, brass, scrap iron, and scrap cars. Also, our timeout sponsor is Metzger Financial Services. Helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. So here we go. Eight minutes to go. Eight minutes to go in this classic one. Grove Bulldogs lead 50-46. This is Wooster, a little up and under. 
And he misses the shot, gets his own rebound, takes it back up, he's fouled, and he scores. Landon Wooster, that's all strength, brother. As he brings it down, he's gonna go to the Lee's Famous Recipe free throw line for an old fashioned three. Well, and what you what you like is he hung with it. He was patient, he stepped through, he got the offensive rebound, turned right around, gonna get the end one, got Burnesser. And he knocks it in. And it's 50 40. Burnesser with three. That's three huge ones. And uh, Blake Summers continues to stay on the bench, Gilly. I saw him stand up during the timeout, and you just wonder if uh, if he's not feeling well or what's going on. Well, the bug may be going through the school. Absolutely, absolutely. It's unfortunate. Here we are, 50-49. Grove Bulldogs lead 7.35 to play in regulation. Uh, this is going to be one of those old-fashioned thrillers, Gilly. I got a feeling last mm -hmm. team with the ball. <laughs> Kyle Hopkins guarded by Bob, but out top. Trying to get the ball into Barraza. Barraza kind of quiet in the fourth or the third quarter, excuse me. And we've got a foul on the floor. And yeah, I think they got uh, Ginther on the Bean foul. Ginther or, yeah. with the hold. I believe that's his third. You are correct, though. That is his third. So this is Burnesser. Burnesser gets it to Hopkins. Hopkins, a little turnaround jumper, and it's good. Kyle Hopkins. Boy, is he playing well this oh, second half. Playing well. That young man is doing what he wants. He's got 16 on the night. Three in double digits for the Bulldogs. Pirates come down the floor. This is Carey Wright with the ball. He's at the foul line. They'll go Merrick Donaldson. Donaldson goes Ginther. Ginther goes baseline. Kicks it back out. Bob throws it inside to Wright. Wright turnaround. Off the mark. Rebound comes down to Burnesser. And they needed that bucket in the worst way. 52-49, Grove leads with 6.47 to go. Yeah, tough break right there for the Pirates. Got a point-blank shot, but give a lot of credit to Burnesser for walling up. And Trenton Barraza is going to drive, and he's going to be fouled on the shot attempt. He'll go to the line to shoot two, and that foul's on Mary Donaldson. That's a good job, Jim, and that shoulder into the defender by Barraza. And Barraza misses the first shot. So John Paul Yoder will enter the game, giving the Pirates a little more size. He's got three fouls on the night. Barraza gets another shot. And Joe continues to lead 52-49, 6.39 to go. Danny Hobart, Darren Gilbert from Bluffton High School. Shot on the way, and it's good. And it's 53-49. Grove leads by four. Grove's going to go to a little bit of token three-quarter court man-to-man, yeah. Man, yeah. So Wooster will bring the ball up, and he'll run the point, he'll get it over to Merrick Donaldson. Donaldson guarded by Zach Reynolds. What a matchup of these two young men. They'll go Wooster at the top of the key. In the uh, John Paul oh, Yoder. They got him. And Yoder, they got, the, they got the matchup they wanted. They got Yoder being guarded by Landon Best. <laughs> Landon Best comes in at 5'11", Yoder at 6'4". They got the matchup they wanted. That's four. That's, that's, that's four big ones on Best. But give a lot of credit to Coach Boblett and his coaching staff. For Coach Coots and the other ones. Coach Hanna, they, they recognized the mismatch and Picked right up on it, got the ball inside. Big play there by Hopkins. And Hopkins stole the ball, but it goes out of bounds. And Coach Coles is living. He wants a foul on the play. Yeah, no I think foul. he was asking about the contact, but I'm not so sure the official didn't think the ball went first. There you go, there you go. He got his explanation, and sure. that's, that's good officiating right there. So Landon Wooster will trigger the ball in. They'll get it into John Paul Yoder. <laughs> I like when the bigs really catch that ball. They want no part of him on that. Oh, yeah. Time. <laughs> he, yeah, he knows better. He's he's one of those kids. He knows his role and he he plays it very yeah. well. Ginther with a little turnaround. He misses a shot. Rebound comes down to Reynolds. And Reynolds will get it over to Hopkins. Hopkins will bring it down the floor. Grove leads 53-49, under six minutes to play here in the fourth quarter. This is Zach Reynolds from the left side, and it's off the mark. Rebound comes down to Donaldson. Donaldson dribbles through some traffic. He's going to bring it down the floor. He goes behind his back. This is Wooster with the ball up top. He's going to dribble drive to the right side, take it up, and they're going to get a foul on Burness. And the, you know, Wooster's done a great job of, of, with the contact and the foul. Scenario. Yeah, let's see what. That, oh, that's four on him. Four on Burnesser. So they're going to bring Souter back in. 
And Burness is going to take a seat with 539. How long do you keep him on the bench, Gilly? He's a huge part of this team. Who's that? Burness. Uh, I think, you know, you've got, you've, got, you've got to pick your poison here, you know. And, and you got Burnesser right now, and then you turn around and you've got Best also sitting. And Kerry Wright's going to come in the game for the Pirates. I think you've got to take and see what the ebb and the flow of the game is right here in the next two minutes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. The season's on the line. If you can keep it one or, uh, one or two possessions, you know, get those guys a little bit of rest and then make the push here. And he misses that one, so we're at 53-50 with 5.37 to go. Stick around after the game. We'll give out our Stolly Hustle Award. You can check out highlights of tonight's Stolly Hustle Award on the WSN YouTube page. Three ball from the left side, and it's good. Kyle Hopkins knocks in the triple. He's been fantastic, Gilly. He's got 19 to lead the Bulldogs. They lead 56-50. Great move. Great move by Landon Wooster. And he closes the gap 56-52 on the Hawker Drywall scoreboard. Back and forth we go. Yeah, the Pirates aren't going away, are they? No, they are not. This is Hopkins. He's going to dribble drive, a little teardrop, and he knocks it in. Everything's falling for Kyle Hopkins. He knocks it in again. He's got 21 to lead everybody on the floor, and the Dogs lead 58-52. Yeah, the first half, it was who? It was Trenton Barraza. Barraza. Yeah. Second half, Kyle Hopkins, absolutely. Mr. Hopkins. And there's a three ball missed by the Pirates. They're down 58-52. Here come Hopkins. He tries the little Euro step, and they're going to get Landon Wooster on the foul. And Brody Summers is going to check back in the game for the Pirates. Kyle Hopkins will go to the Lee's Famous Recipe free throw line. And he'll knock the first one in. Tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. Grove leads 59-52, 438 to go. Danny Holbrook, Darren Gilbert from a sold-out bluff in high school. If you think about this, you know, they've extended this to eight points with Burnesser and Best on the bench. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Here comes Ginther, and the Grove fans are on their feet. This is Boblet with the ball, 425 to go. Gets it over to Wooster. Wooster guarded by Barraza. Wooster's going to take it in. He'll roll up, and contact. The bucket goes in. No foul called, and Coach Bobber's going to take a turn. With 4.16 to go, the Grove Bulldogs lead 60-54. We'll have further action right after these messages. Tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services. I'll you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. 4.16 to go, Gilly. Grove leads 60-54. It feels like it's getting a little bit farther apart, doesn't it? Well, and you know what? That's a great timeout time by Coach Bobbitt there. Sure. Now he can set his defense, and, you know, he, he he's probably picking and choosing who he wants Grove to shoot the basketball. I guarantee it's not going to be 21. It's not going to be three. Sure. You know, you've got you've got to make some choices here on allowing perimeter jump shooters. And with Burnesser on the bench and best, you can change your philosophy up a little bit defensively. This is Hopkins with the ball. He's got 21 on the night. Excuse me, he's got 20. Yeah, 21, excuse me. No, he's got 23, Gilly. I, I missed his last two points. He's going in for number 25, and he misses that shot. There's Donaldson with the ball. Had the right idea, though, didn't he? he Took sure it to did. the rim, got a mismatch. Had Summers on him, a post player. This is Brody Summers. Boblet from the left side. Oh, it was down and came out, and it's stolen by Wooster. Boblet with the ball again. He's going to kick it back out. He's got Ginther. Ginther thought about taking a long three. He's going to dribble drive, takes it inside, gets it out to Wooster. 3.25 to go. Ginther with the ball. Shot goes off mark. It's corralled by Wooster. And they're going to get a foul on Mays in the corner. Yeah, there was sort of a scrum there. He got beat going for the basketball and the rebound and got a little over aggressive and used his chest and displaced the offensive rebounder. 
Uh, there comes Burnesser. He's going to play yeah, him say, now. That's, that's four fouls on Burnesser, so we'll see how this plays out. And he's got Best over there. He can bring him back in also. This is Brody Summers. Oh, great cut. And he tried to get it to Mary Donaldson. Had the right idea, just hit it too hard off well, the floor. I, yeah, well, and you know what? He didn't take the correct angle on the bounce pass, you know? Almost, when you throw a bounce pass, Danny, you almost have to go sure. two-thirds of the way there. If you go halfway or less than halfway on the bounce, it's going gonna, it's gonna to go too high, and that's exactly what happened right there. This is Barraza, a little triple drive to the right side. Trenton Barraza, oh my goodness, you want to talk about speed. He gets to the bucket. He's got 20 on the night. Dogs lead 62 54, 251 to go. Yeah, they're getting the matches they want, mismatches. They're getting athletes on post players and they're taking advantage of them, getting them to the rim. Bobla misses that one. And the dogs got a chance to extend this one to double figures. Mays in the corner. Thought about shooting it. He'll go Burnesser. Burnesser nice finds curl, Barraza. Cut. Barraza takes it in and he scores. Trent Barraza, are you kidding me? What a night for that young man. He's got 22 on the night. Great curl cut right there. Defender was chasing. Dogs lead by 10. This is Wooster. Gets it out to Ginther. Ginther goes Summers on the baseline. Summers skip pass across to Bobra. Back to Ginther. Back into Summers. Summers guarded by Burnesser. He's going to take it up left-handed. This is shot. Rebound to Ginther. And we're going to get a fight for the ball. And they're going to say foul on Barraza. That's, yeah, loose ball foul. And we're down to 203. Dogs lead. Can't fault the effort though, huh? No, absolutely not. Carrie Wright will check back in the game for Bluffton. Summers will take a seat. And Ginther will go to the Lee's Famous Recipe free throw line. 2.03 to go. Columbus Grove leads 64-54. They defeated Bluffton earlier this year, 47-35 on February 9th. Trying to do it back to back here. Ginther knocks that one in, and it's 64-55. Ginther's got four on the night. These student sections haven't sat down at all. <laughs> no, they, they haven't. They've been everywhere. Ginther with the second shot, and he knocks that two one in. Two big free throws right there by that young man, cutting it to eight with just a little over two minutes, 2.03 to go. Bluffton in their pressure now. Burnesser with the ball, and they'll get it over to Hopkins. Hopkins finds Barraza. They break the pressure, and Columbus Grove will set up shop with 1.51 to go. They're going to come out and double-team the ball. And it's just a keep away right now. We're down to 141. Barraza with the ball. Gets it over to Mays. Mays gets it over to Hopkins. Back to Barraza. Bobbert comes out. And Hopkins is going to be fouled by Ginther at the free throw line. Yeah, this Grove basketball team, the second half of the season, has really, really turned it up. And one of the things that I watched over against Allen East in the fourth quarter they took care of the basketball and spread the floor, and that's exactly what they're doing now. That just shows you how much confidence they have in those guys stepping to the charity stripe and making free throws. Well, their quickness has been on display tonight, and it's evident that they are athletic and quick, and when they shoot the ball as well as they have tonight, and we're going to get a foul. They're going to get, uh, I think they're going to get double fouls? No. No, they're just going to get, uh, yeah, Ginther with the foul. That's his fifth. He's going to foul out of this one. B.J. McFerrin explaining to Coach Boblin what the call was. Yeah, it was a, he, 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 uh, he showed it and said basically he reached out and grabbed him by the jersey. That's unfortunate because being, you know, nice being a sophomore, he's got two more years of basketball left. But unfortunately, he got caught right there with the hand in the cookie jar, well, so to speak. And you, you look at this Bluffton Pirate team. Oh. Merrick Donaldson will be back. Taryn Boblet will be back. Blake Summers will be back. Brody Summers will be back. I mean, they're loaded. <laughs> they are. You know, they, they lose, what, three seniors, and those three seniors have been, you know, 
played a huge part in the success well, of this yeah, Bluffton Pirate program. Landon Wooster will be back, too. He started tonight. So here's Hopkins from the free throw line, and nothing but net. Kyle Hopkins has been automatic tonight. Makes it 65-56. Hopkins got 24 on the night. Stick around after the game. We'll give out a Stolly Hustle Award. You can check out the Stolly Hustle highlight page on WSN News 2 page. Here's Merrick Donaldson, 66-56. Donaldson brings the ball down. He'll dribble drive, and he falls down, and they're going to get a foul. And they're going to say Reynolds on I the think foul. he locked him up with, with, yeah, with his foot. That's five on Reynolds, if I'm, if I'm correct, right? Oh, no, no that's I'm sorry. That's for, that's, burn that's who I was thinking of. You know, I can't keep track of it. It's okay. <laughs> You're nervous. That's no, right. Just kidding. <laughs> so Merrick Donaldson will go to the line. Donaldson's got five for the Pirates. Yeah, 76% at the charity strike. Yeah, these are big ones right here, partner. Coach right. Boblett with two timeouts left and the Bulldogs of, with four. Yeah, a lot of sweat on the floor tonight. We've seen a bunch of that. One twenty-six to go. Grove leads sixty-six fifty-six. Yeah, you got to wonder this little delay right here, how much it's going to affect Donaldson at the charity strike. And he misses the first one. Thomas Grove will check back in. It'll be blended best for Zach Reynolds. Everybody's got a role on this Grove team, and they play it really, really well. They do. Donaldson knocks in the second one. Makes it's it two six. really good teams playing yeah. tonight. Two really good coached teams. And somebody's going to go home on the short end of the stick. Burnesters are going to trigger the ball in for the Bulldogs. They lead 66-57 with 1.26 to go. They get it in to the corner. This is Souter. And we're going to get a time. With 1.23 to go, we'll step aside. You're watching High School Basketball at WSN. We're back here at Bluffton High School with 123 to go. Danny Hilbert, Darren Gilbert, the Grove Bulldogs lead the Bluffton Pirates 66-57. Back and forth battle all night. Grove's kind of controlled the fourth quarter, Gilly. To their credit, they've extended that lead and really done a nice job of staying distance. Well, Mr. Hopkins has put on a show, and now yeah. Mr. Barraza, he's at 22. Not bad. Yeah, right. 47, and then throw in... Uh, Mr. Burnesser with an 11. Barraza breaks free, and he's going to score and be fouled by Landon Rooster. And that's going to put him in the line with 121 to go. Uh, and, and Landon Rooster kind of got caught in that one. He didn't want to give up the layup, but right. uh, nonetheless, he gets the foul. So Barraza will go to the line with a chance. to extend this lead for Grove. And he does. Trent Barraza, he's got 25 on the night. He's tied for scoring honors with his teammate, Kyle Hopkins. Bluffton breaks pressure here. This is Boblett with the ball up top. Yeah, Grove doing a really good job just extending pressure right here, making it difficult for the Pirates to get an offensive set and get an opportunity. There's a big bucket step right there back. that goes in. Yeah, step back two, and that's off the mark. Rebound comes down to Burnesser, and they're going to get a foul. And it looks like they're going to get a foul on number 22. Against Branson Hilty. Branson Hilty, who has entered the game for the Pirates. Hilty just coming into the game for the first time here in the fourth quarter. Makes it 69-57, and partner, this one may be coming to an end here. John Paul Yoder is going to check back in. Don't forget to stick around after the game for our Stolly Hustle Award. You can check out highlights tonight's Stolly Hustle Award on the WSN YouTube page. Well, we can tell you this. It appears Coldwater is going to be playing 
the, the Liberty Benton Eagles. Yeah, and the winner of this game will play Wayne Trace, correct? That yeah. is correct. Yeah. At Wayne Trace. At Wayne Trace. Liberty Benton, the big winner, 59-37 tonight. And Donaldson driving to the rim gets fouled by Zach Reynolds. Foul to Zach Reynolds, 43 seconds to go. Mary Donaldson will shoot two. So Mary Donaldson knocks that one in. Tell you what a classy move there by Coach Bobla, getting the seniors out. Get, get their honors, absolutely. <laughs> Carrie Wright, one of the seniors. JP, John Paul Yoder. Donaldson to the line. Shot is up and it is good. Wade, Wade Ginther to the other senior. Unfortunately not here this evening under the weather. Barraza will get double teamed and there's a near steal. And gets across the line. He's triple teamed. Gets it over to Mays. Mays gets it back to Barraza with 25 seconds to go. And they're gonna get a fat, no, they're gonna get a held ball. And the ball will go back to Grove with 20 seconds to go. Good job right there by Bluffton on that trap on Barraza. Chased him to a spot along this sideline and Mr. Hohenbrink right there locked him up for a held ball. Burnester gets the ball in to Souter. Souter, I thought he was going to lose it there. He was guarded by two people. And Souter with the ball gets it over to Mays. And we are down to 10 seconds. There's a steal. And they're just going to walk there it by up. Hilty with the steal. And that'll do it from Bluffton High School. The Columbus Grove Bulldogs win a battle 70-59. We come back, we'll wrap this one up, and we'll have our Stolly Hustle player of the game. Back here at Bluffton High School with our Stolly Hustle Award winner, Kyle Hopkins. 25 big points tonight, Kyle. Feeling pretty good. Yeah, pretty, pretty good. It feels always feels good to beat Bluffton twice in one year, so it's just a great atmosphere. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. You know, you had the big win uh, earlier in the month. Did you guys talk about that, how tough an environment it was going to be in here? Yeah, we knew coming here and having to beat them twice was going to be tough, but we just battled through adversity all game, and we just made shots down the stretch. Yeah, it looked really physical out there tonight. There was a lot of talk and a lot of jaw, and it, it, was that the game plan to, to try to get into them a little bit? Yeah, they're real big. Uh, at halftime, Coach Cole has told us to be physical, and if we get a foul, we get a foul, but at least we're physical. That's all that matters. This is a team that seems like it's came on in the second half. You guys have won six of your last eight games, really playing good basketball right now. Yeah, I mean, in the halftime, our coach always tells us we've got to have a good second half, got to come out strong, and when you always come out strong, it's always a great ending to it. Well, congratulations, Kyle. He's our Stolly Hustle Award winner tonight. You can check out the highlights on the WSN YouTube page. Back here with Coach Connor Coles, the victorious Columbus Grove Bulldogs. And, Coach, what a hard-fought victory for your kids. Yeah, it was. Uh, Bluffton's a really good team. Um, <laughs> our guys played really, really well. Um, they were ready for it. They were confident in their abilities, and, and we got her done. Coach, did you talk to the kids about the, the, the win earlier this year and having to come in here and beat them two times in a year? I mean, that's a tough task. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it, it's always hard to beat a team twice, you know. This kid. He's fine. Um, so yeah, but we definitely tried to prepare them with confidence throughout this week. You know, we we tried to preach in their work ethic and their abilities, and and they were definitely ready to go. So yeah, talk a little bit about two players on your team, Kyle Hopkins and Trenton Barraza. My goodness, they were good tonight. They were. Trenton started us off in the first half, played really really well. Um, he's a really good athlete. You know, we try to get him in space and drive and create and kick to others. And then uh, when they started to guard him in tighter in the second half, Kyle Hopkins definitely picked up the slack. Um, made some shots outside, made some pull-up jumpers. So, yeah, they, those two guys make my job a lot easier. So, Coach, on to Wayne Trace in the next round. Have you thought about anything that they do, or do you know anything about them? Uh, I know they have a, a couple really good players. They're well-coached, um, and that's about it. I honestly haven't 
I've watched stuff on you know WSN and things like that, but I haven't watched a single single thing of film. Well, go enjoy this one, Coach Connor Calls, head coach Columbus Grove Bulldogs. They win 70-59.